Hey YouTube, how's it going? Dustin Smith here with A2K, Allegiance to the King. Today is Friday and we've got another exciting Friday video for you on responsibly reading the book of Revelation, okay? Hopefully you've been enjoying our videos on the subject of the book of Revelation and its various features and encouraging you to read that particular book responsibly and not irresponsibly. Today we're going to be asking the question, why was John on the island of Patmos? Okay, Why was John on the island of Patmos? There are a lot of assumptions that are out there regarding the island of Patmos and regarding why John was on the island of Patmos, and that gets read into the Bible unfairly and irresponsibly. And so we're going to look at this passage, and then we're going to look at a little bit of history and geography and try to ascertain why really was John on the island of Patmos. This passage is in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. That's where we understand that John was on the island of Patmos. It reads, I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in tribulation and kingdom and perseverance, which are in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. That's Revelation 1.9. There, John says in the first person, I was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Okay? Now, I want to say something right from the outset. He doesn't say that I was exiled to the island of Patmos. He doesn't say I was banished to the island of Patmos. Okay? We, that's not something that's actually said in the text. It's not something that John actually tells us. But there have been a lot of Christians that have assumed that the island of Patmos was an island of exile, as in a Roman punishment of exile, that they would banish people to islands, and that Patmos was one of those particular islands that the Roman authorities would banish people to. There have also been a lot of assumptions that the island of Patmos was a prison colony that exiles would be sent to in order to go into prison. Or some people think that the island of Patmos was just a deserted island that John was just left on by some sort of ship of Roman authorities. Okay, these are a lot of assumptions that the text doesn't necessarily say and that our authorities don't actually say in history and in geography. And I just want to kind of give you a couple of instances to show how this sort of assumption just continues to be said and stated even in some scholarly reference materials. Okay, so what do we know in particular about the island of Patmos? Okay, we know that the island of Patmos is 30 miles in circumference, okay, that's a pretty big island, okay. We know that on that island there was a temple dedicated to Artemis, which means that there were worshippers of Artemis there. Artemis was primarily worshipped in Ephesus, and so the island off the coast of Ephesus, being the island of Patmos, would understandably have a contingent of worshippers of Artemis, and of course a temple there. There's also a Greek gymnasium there, and we have examine funerary inscriptions that have been dated from the 1st century B.C. all the way till the 3rd century A.D., okay, so a 400-year gap of funerary inscriptions, and we can tell by those inscriptions, those graves, that there were men, women, and children that were living there, okay? So we've got a lot of assumptions about Patmos that aren't necessarily true. Some people thinking that it's a designated island of exile, a designated Roman prison colony and a designated island that was deserted. Of course, some of those things don't make sense when you overlap them, but these things aren't necessarily true just strictly from an archaeological standpoint, okay? Robert Mulholland, in his commentary on the book of Revelation, says that Pliny the Elder, in his book Natural Histories, book four, states that Patmos was an island of exile. But you can look up Pliny Natural Histories, Book 4, and it doesn't say anything about Patmos being an island of exile. It just mentions Patmos in the midst of a bunch of other islands that have nothing to do with an island of exile. So there, that's just a misstated reference in a modern scholarly reference, okay? Uh, Victorinus, who was a 3rd century Christian who wrote about the Book of Revelation, he wrote a commentary on the Book of Revelation, he said that... John was put onto exile in Patmos because Domitian, the emperor, had placed him there to work in the mines, okay? So Victorinus in the third century says that John was put onto Patmos to work in the mines. But we've excavated Patmos and there are no mines on Patmos, okay? 
And so there's just another thing that even an ancient Christian misstated because he had not checked his facts, he had not been to Patmos himself, and he just uh, assumed or he had heard from some other people erroneously that there were mines on Patmos and that John was put there to work on mines. But there are no mines for John to work on on Patmos. And so that's also not true. David Ani, in his three volumes on uh, the book of Revelation in the Word Biblical Commentary, says this in his first volume, page 78. First of all, it must be emphasized that Pliny, Natural History, book four, does not refer to Patmos as a Roman penal colony or as a place of banishment, as many scholars have erroneously claimed. I've already brought this point out. Further, there is no historical evidence that any other individual was banished to Patmos, okay? We know of the islands that the Romans used to banish people, but Patmos is not mentioned among those particular islands. And yet, Patmos is mentioned by a variety of Latin and Greek writers in the time of the book of Revelation, okay? So if it wasn't an island of exile, and if Patmos wasn't a prison colony, and if Patmos wasn't a deserted island, why was John on the island of Patmos? He says here in Revelation 1-9 that he was there because of the word of God and because of the testimony of Jesus. This phrase gets used elsewhere in the book of Revelation to show that people do get persecuted because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, because they are faithfully preaching the gospel, Jesus' gospel about the kingdom of God. And so what we can say for certain is that because John was a faithful evangelist in preaching the gospel, that was one of the motivating reasons why he was on this particular island. Maybe he was there, and this is what I think, maybe he was there as an evangelist. Maybe he went there because it was an established island with a settlement, and there were people there that needed to hear the message of the kingdom, and he went there because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Maybe he was being persecuted in some other places, and he felt that this was a safer place for him to work and to do his evangelistic work. But what we can say for certain is that the island of Patmos was not a place that he was deliberately exiled. Okay, we don't know that for certain. We know that Patmos was not a prison colony. We know that for certain. And we know that the island of Patmos was not a deserted island that John was just left on by some sort of Roman authorities. Okay, so we need to be very, very careful about the assumptions that we make regarding the text of the book of Revelation. And sometimes we need to go back in to check out the references for ourselves to do our homework and to be responsible interpreters of the Bible, okay? Hopefully this has encouraged you in your understanding of the book of Revelation and why John was put on the island of Patmos. And hopefully it's encouraged you to be like John and to be a faithful preacher of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, which is the gospel of the kingdom of God, okay? Be sure to like, subscribe, and share for more videos from A2K. My name is Dustin Smith. I'm with Allegiance to the King. Until next time, you take care.